Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And like many other X-Men fans, I am very excited about the future of the franchise. Between the quality of the current comics, the upcoming X-Men 97 series, and the promise of mutants in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, things have never looked brighter for Marvel's most uncanny heroes. Believe me, that's something I didn't think I'd be able to say five years ago. I still haven't forgotten just how bleak things once looked for all things X-Men. But I'd rather not dwell on that too much. I've already made multiple videos about the current comics, as well as theories and speculation about what we can expect from mutants in the MCU. The possibilities are truly astonishing, and I'm sure I'll have a lot more to say as more announcements come in. But for this video, I'm not going to focus on the future of the X-Men. Instead, I'm going to look to the past for a bit. Because any part of building a promising future is learning the lessons from the past. Now, in previous videos, I have been quite vocal about my criticisms of the Fox era X-Men movies, especially with regards to the original trilogy. I don't deny that they had their moments, but I tend to believe their flaws are more understated than their strengths. And if there's one flaw in particular I think is worth highlighting, it's this one. The Fox era X-Men movies got Wolverine wrong for the most part. Now, before anyone goes into a berserker rage, please bear with me. I know this is likely an unpopular opinion. And please note that this opinion has nothing to do with the performance of Hugh Jackman, who was perfectly cast for the role. This is more of a big picture criticism. Because when I say the Fox movies got Wolverine wrong, I mean they got wrong some of the most fundamental aspects of what makes Wolverine such a great character. And because of that, many other Fox X-Men movies suffered as a result. But before breaking down what Fox did, let's take a step back and break down the basics. Wolverine's story, in terms of history and lore, might be vast and complex in terms of scope and scale. But at its core, Wolverine is this gruff, moody, jaded, and temperamental brute with metal claws. But he's still a hero, one who tries to do good with his unique skills and abilities. Now, I know that's a gross simplification, but it's worth emphasizing because at times, it feels like Wolverine's heroism gets lost in his personality, so much so that he comes off as too much of an asshole at times. Many fans will often label him an anti-hero or some shade of grim and gritty. But I think that perspective represents a fundamentally flawed understanding of who Wolverine is. For one, it overlooks the fact that while Wolverine has an abrasive attitude and some serious personal issues, what he does and why he does it is ultimately heroic. It doesn't matter how grumpy, crude, or profane he is, his actions and his intentions are still fundamentally heroic. Not anti-heroic or operating in some morally gray area. He, like his fellow X-Men, is a hero. That's how he's been portrayed in the comics for most of his history, going back to the days of Chris Claremont and Frank Miller. That's also how he's been portrayed in multiple cartoons, from Pride of the X-Men to X-Men Evolution. His story is still complicated, full of lost memories, dark secrets, and angry outbursts. But his heroic, honorable nature is never in dispute. Now, this is not a trivial detail, but it's one that the Fox movies didn't seem to fully grasp. In the very first X-Men movie, Wolverine begins as a mysterious loner who isn't afraid to pick a bar fight. He's even inclined to help Rogue when she needs it, albeit not initially. But even when he agrees to help her, he's still kind of an ass about it. Not just grumpy or moody, just an ass. Now that's not too big of a deal at first. His story was just beginning here. He hadn't yet become the hero we know and love. But that process doesn't really progress once he crosses paths with the X-Men. I mean, just look beyond the badass moments of when he fights Sabretooth or survives an explosion. Look at what he actually does. He insults Xavier and his school. 
And when Cyclops extends his hands to welcome him, he just scoffs. And when Storm talks to him about taking sides in this struggle between humans and mutants, he insults her. Then, when he starts flirting with Jean Grey and Cyclops tells him to stop, Wolverine basically ignores him. And he doesn't really stop for the rest of the trilogy. That ends up leading to a whole host of other problems, but I'll get to that later. And on top of all that, Wolverine ends up stealing Cyclops' motorcycle when he goes after Rogue, which he never apologizes for, by the way. And in the sequel, he even steals his car. Now take a step back. Ask yourself, what did Cyclops do to deserve that other than telling him to stop flirting with his fiance? Now in the comics, they do have a history of not getting along and for reasons that don't just involve Jean Grey. But that history doesn't exist here. And in that context, Wolverine isn't being gruff or grumpy. He's just being an outright asshole. Sure, he does eventually start doing heroic things, but only after Magneto roughs him up and takes Rogue as a prisoner. And even while fighting to save Rogue, there's not a sense that Wolverine has bought into the X-Men's mission. There's not a sense that he's dedicated himself to this cause like he does in the comics and cartoons. He's just sort of along for the ride. And when he's finally done stabbing things, he just up and leaves for vague reasons. As if he has to go back to being the same learner he was in the beginning. Now, it's true that Wolverine is known for running off and doing his own thing but only after establishing that the Xavier Institute is his home, the X-Men are his family, and he actually cares about them. But the first X-Men movie doesn't really establish this. The sequels do make an effort, but it's never clear or obvious. Again, just take a step back and replace Wolverine with any other character. It says his actions and his attitude in the first movie. Are these really the actions of a hero or even an anti-hero? I would argue no. It's just the actions of an asshole. But because he's Wolverine and he looks so badass while doing all this, he gets a pass? I'm sorry, but that's a shallow, his poor understanding of the character as a whole. Now, yes, he does eventually return to the Xavier Institute in X2. But even before William Stryker attacks, there's not a sense that Wolverine returned to protect mutants like Rogue. He was just kind of there. Maybe he was there because he finally did buy into Xavier's dream. Or maybe he was just there to hook up with Jean Grey despite her being engaged. There is an effort to soften his persona, but it's still frustratingly vague. It's never made clear whether he's back at the Institute for entirely selfish reasons or if he's really trying to be part of this new family. If you didn't know anything about Wolverine other than what was on screen, could you really be certain? And it only got worse by the time X3 rolled around. Now, that movie was a mess for a lot of reasons. But with respect to Wolverine's characterization, it ended up being one of his worst showings, in my opinion. And that's quite a turn, too, because when the movie begins, he's actually in a better place than he was in previous movies. This time, he's still at the Xavier Institute. He also seemed to have found a place there, now acting as a teacher and a mentor to young mutants. That is entirely keeping with how he's often portrayed in other mediums. He's still grumpy and gruff, but the basics of Wolverine are still there. Then, less than 15 minutes into the movie, it's all completely undermined. And once again, it comes back to the most god-awful love triangle in the history of love triangles. I know I've talked about it many times before, but it's worth belaboring again. Because again, just look at his actions. One minute, Wolverine is telling Cyclops that Jean is dead and he should move on. Then, the second Jean returns and kills Cyclops, Wolverine jumps at the chance to make out with her. Remember, this guy has already stolen Cyclops' motorcycle, wrecked his car, and constantly flirted with his fiance, despite having seen firsthand how much her death hurt him at the end of X2. Then he gets a chance to make out with her, and he just takes it? 
I don't care what timeline or alternate universe you're in. That is an Omega level dick move. And one that sets the stage for everything that goes wrong in X3. Because after that moment, Wolverine basically becomes a blunt instrument. He has no personal arc anymore. His only purpose is to whine about Jean Grey and fight whoever is in front of him. The movie tries to sell the idea that he now has to lead the X-Men, but in the grand scheme of things, did he really do that in any meaningful capacity? Storm was the primary leader once Xavier and Cyclops died. All Wolverine did was banter and stab things, stopping only occasionally to whine about Jean. And the only time he gets to do anything more than that is when he ultimately has to kill Jean. But even in that moment, he ends up being something worse than an asshole. He's just flat out pathetic. It was set up as him having to kill the woman he loved, something Wolverine has had to do many times in the comics. But there's just one glaring problem in X3, as well as the whole Fox X-Men trilogy. He does not know this woman at all. It's not just an opinion. It's an objective observation of the events that play out in the first three movies. He hasn't lived with her for an extended period. He hasn't been on a team with her for an extended period. There's no indication he even knows her middle name. Just look at the sequence of events in the first two movies. Wolverine leaves at the end of X1, and Jean dies shortly after he returns in X2. There's no indication that they know each other for more than a few days at most. And there's even less indication that he actually knows Jean on a personal level, beyond the fact that she's engaged to someone else. So how the hell is she supposed to be the love of his life? And was it really worth completely shitting all over Cyclops, whose only crime was what? Being in Wolverine's way of a woman he wanted to hook up with? How the hell are we, the audience, supposed to root for an asshole like that? Are these the actions of a hero? Or anyone even worthy of respect? Now, I know I made that point in a previous video, but it's worth making again because it reveals a lot about Fox's horribly flawed approach to Wolverine's character in the movies. The only time he ever has any emotional depth is when he's whining about a woman who either doesn't love him, dies on him, or is some way attracted to him. It played a big part in the dumb, empty resolution to X3, and it rendered Wolverine one of the most pathetic characters of the entire trilogy. But it still got worse after that. Both Wolverine Origins and the Wolverine did little to improve his standing. I don't think I need to remind everyone just how messy Wolverine Origins was on so many levels. But that movie basically doubled down on the idea that Wolverine can only ever grow as a character when a woman is overtly fridged on his behalf. Now, at the very least, he seemed to know Kayla Silverfox longer than he knew Jean Grey. And in The Wolverine, there was a lot more mutual affection between him and Mariko. But still, the message was the same. Wolverine's story can only possess when a woman is involved. That alone is shallow enough, but what brought Wolverine to his lowest point during the Fox era actually happened in The Wolverine. It starts with him having ditched the X-Men because he's still whining about Jean's death. And again, he barely knew that woman. And Wolverine Origins showed that whining about a dead lover is kind of a recurring theme for him. But what made it so much worse was the fact that he ditched the X-Men. The fact that he leaves them after they lost Charles Xavier, that is beyond a dick move. Not to mention completely antithetical to who Wolverine is as a character. Because in the comics and cartoons, Jean Grey has died before, and Wolverine has lost loved ones before. But even though he mourns and he suffers, he doesn't just ditch the X-Men. In fact, he usually does the exact opposite, fighting even harder to protect those that he cares about. Him just leaving, and after all the terrible events that occurred in X3, that is unforgivably selfish and weak on his part and the exact fucking opposite of what Wolverine does in every other medium. And if all that wasn't pathetic enough, 
he goes one further by attempting to ditch his healing factor. Just because he's so sad over this woman he barely knew that he wants to grow old and die now. That's not the actions of a hero. That's the actions of a total fucking coward. Now, at the very least, I will say that Days of Futures Past and Logan did a much better job of getting Wolverine right. If you manage to ignore the other movies, both do give us a version of Wolverine that's pretty much in keeping with better iterations of the character. But the only way to achieve that was to basically forget all the baggage from the other movies and keep things basic. Hell, I'll even concede that Logan was genuinely good when it came to capturing Wolverine's larger complexities. It really highlighted his anger, his feelings of isolation, and his sense of honor, especially when it came to saving those that he cared about. That's what made the ending of that movie so powerful. But in the grand scheme of things, I would still argue that Fox has a losing record when it comes to Wolverine. Now this brings me back to the present and the future of this iconic character. The Fox X-Men movies and all their associated baggage is now a thing of the past, relegated to a defunct timeline. Even though it may be revisited in Deadpool 3, it is no longer the future of the franchise. The Marvel Cinematic Universe now is a chance to reinvent and revitalize this franchise for a whole new generation. And there's no doubt that Wolverine will be a key part of that effort. But what form will it take? What kind of Wolverine are we going to get? Regardless of what happens in Deadpool 3, it sure as hell can't be like the Wolverine from the Fox movies. And it can't be too much like the Wolverine we've gotten from the comics and cartoons. Like every other character iteration in the Marvel Cinematic Universe to date, this version of Wolverine needs to stand out. And it's here where I hope Marvel Studios learns some important lessons from the Fox era. First and foremost, the basics of Wolverine need to be concise and consistent. He is, at his core, a temperamental cantankerous old man, but one whose actions and intentions are fundamentally noble. Yes, he'll spit, swear, growl, and grunt when helping the X-Men save the day. He may even clash with his own teammates. But in the end, he will stand by them. He'll still do the right thing. And his friends and fellow X-Men will stand by him too, even when he's being a jerk. That's another key component of his character. Wolverine is a jerk. Most everyone who's ever written this character in other mediums agrees. He is a jerk, but he is not an asshole. He's got an attitude problem, but for good reason. And it's not just because some woman he's attracted to dies on him. This is a man who has been tortured, used, and manipulated all his life. He's had his memories stolen. He's had friends and loved ones die because of him. He, more than most, has a good reason for being so grumpy all the time. But he doesn't let that stop him from doing the right thing, protecting the people he cares about, and being the best there is at what he does. It's part of what makes him such a great character to begin with. It's why he's one of the most popular comic book characters of all time. He does what he does despite all he's endured. Being with the X-Men and making new connections, that's what makes him stronger and better in the long run. He'll never stop being a jerk about it, but he will keep trying to be a better man. If the MCU just starts from that foundation, then they'll have a better, bolder version of Wolverine one who can resonate with a whole new generation of fans. And after what he endured for nearly 20 years under Fox, I say the old knucklehead deserves better. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks for joining me in my world. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care and stay safe, bub.